to two peat was hard, but like I said, that three peat was damn near impossible, and we didn't. So, and we, we it's hard, man, to win in this league. Period. So, we're gonna get to the point where you did three peat. So, don't worry. <laughs> uh, traded to Phoenix uh, in the Charles Barkley deal. Not there long. You arrive in L.A. with Shaq, Eddie, Nick, said Eldon Campbell. Uh, lose to Utah in that first round. Uh, what was going to LA like and, and and getting a chance to play with Shaq initially? Well, it, it, it was it was great, you know, because you think about all the battles Shaq and I had in college and then in finals and then to play alongside him and see his development. Uh, if you watch young Shaq, he didn't have the footwork as he did as he got older. He started spinning and dunking on people and doing that thing, and he started you know hitting his jump hook, um, and then you know you playing with Kobe, uh, the guy, and you know we all we all said it, we all seen it how hard he worked. And then you had guys that, you know, like Eddie and, and Nick and, and Rick Fox. And, you know, Eddie Jones probably one of the most athletic guys mm -hmm. ever. You know, Nick is one of the most competitive guys ever. But when you got that and then you got little young Kobe sitting over there like, I need all those shots you getting, mm -hmm. I need. <laughs> and so we went into Utah and got swept. And everybody talks about why did you go to Kobe for him to sh take that final second shot? Because the dude was hot. People forget about that. Is you go with the hot guy, and every to me, great coaches go with the hot guy. He had like I think like seventeen in the fourth or sixteen mm -hmm. in the fourth, something good, and he just missed the shot. So everybody was like, you can't give it to a young guy. But right from that moment, that yeah, you can tell that this dude was gonna be something special because it's not even a, he can't even buy beer yet, can't mm -hmm. even buy liquor, and he's taking over a team and you know saying get on my shoulders and it, it was hard. But I think the best thing for us is when we brought in pieces that. Fit. I know we hate to see Eddie and Nick go, but they weren't the pieces that make us a championship team. And then also we added Phil, who made Shaq finally get in shape, you know, mm -hmm. basketball shape, mm -hmm. and um, and we and he made Kobe play more together. And then we just, you know, we was able to win a championship. Speak to Phil's greatness, and you know, I was fortunate enough to I only got a year with them, but his ability to push people's buttons for the greater cause of the team. Yeah. He may get in a motherfucking argument. <laughs> I remember Ron used to cuss his ass out, but he knew how to push those buttons yeah. to get different guys going. Speak to his greatness and kind of what he brought to that team. I, I think <coughs> what the main thing is he got guys to understand this is bigger than you. And, and you know, he also got that little, you know, you have the devil and the angel. He's got the angel of coaching Michael Jordan on his shoulder and everybody looks at the angel instead of the devil and kind of, you know, listens to him. But the thing with Phil, what people don't talk about, is his ability to just bring you to a side and talk to you about what he needs you to do for the team. You know, I've had, I, I had so many guys that come out of a meeting with Phil and said, man, Phil told me I need to do this, this, and this. Have you talked to Phil yet? I'm like, no, nah, he ain't never called me in office. <laughs> like, he, what? He says, never, they said, we, Phil and I never had a conversation except for one time. And the only reason we had a conversation is because I was on the training table getting my back worked on. He was about to get his back worked on. We had a conversation, and the conversation went exactly like this. How you doing? Good. I said, so what happened between you and Danny Ainge? I didn't like the motherfucker. Okay. End of conversation. And we never had a conversation other than like, yo, um, yo, help me, give me a double team with Tim. We don't need that. You know, it was never like, you know, like Pop and I've had conversations. He's asking me about my daughter. He's asking me about my family. You know, Rudy and I have conversations. So it's just it one of those things that I think Phil was one of the type of person, if you needed, if he needed you to do what's best for the team, he would have a conversation. And I think deep down he knew I put the team first. I didn't put myself first. I didn't care if I scored. I didn't care. As long as we won, that's all I care about. And so for me, I think that's how Phil was able to bring everybody together. He knew he'd go to B-Shaw and say, B-Shaw, I need you to talk to Kobe. I need you to talk to Shaq. I need them to play, get, play better. I need them to play defense. And it was one of those things that he, he was like a psychologist where he just know how to mentally get people motivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you see Shaq's greatness and Kobe starting to grow, what was that process like? It was it was it was a great thing to watch. I think everybody really saw the process when we played Indiana in the finals, and they saw him when Shaq mm -hmm. fouled out. Kobe was able to take over, but we saw it all season. We saw it in practice. We saw how he was getting better and better. We saw how hard he worked, and I, and I think what was best was like Shaq understood it too. You know, whether Shaq, he admitted it or not, yeah, he and, understood it, and he know because there was moments with Shaq would give him the ball and you, you know this is how you know because Shaq would back off and try to get out of his way and he would go to the dunker spot and let Kobe do his thing that's how he was able to get that dunk 
in the Portland oh, series Portland because he was letting uh, Kobe do his thing. Mm -hmm. And even though he was killing, but, you know, okay, you, who has a better advantage, Kobe or Shaq, you know? So he said, go ahead, Kobe, you hot. And he was mm -hmm. able to get a shot. And I think, you know, it's just like anybody, when you feel like it's your team, you got this young buck trying to take on, you still got it. You know, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's different when you don't have it. You still got it. And you're like, no, no, I still got it. This is still my city. But I think he should, you know, I think he realized, you know, I need this dude to be mm -hmm. to get what I want. Mm -hmm. I need everybody on this team to get what I want. It's not about me. Because we all seen MJ try to do it until he got, you know, Pip and, and all, you know, Horace and all these other guys to make them whole. Tony. You got to have this. And I think that's what he did. 